Hey everyone, in this pretty quick video, I want to quickly explore Azure AD guest user permissions. As always, if this video is useful, please give it a like, subscribe, comment, and share. So the idea is I have my Azure Active Directory. So I have my Azure AD tenant, and I've populated that with all my users, my groups, generally replicated from an AD on-premises, but I could have cloud accounts as well. And then to this Azure AD, I have lots of kind of apps that are federated through those identities and might have Azure services. Then there's other people I work with. There might be partners that have their own Azure AD over here. There might be Microsoft accounts. There might be Gmail accounts. I might use regular kind of SAML federation. I might even use something called a one-time passcode. I'll email them a code, and then they type that in to actually authenticate. And for all of these things, essentially what I'm doing is I'm making these aware using B2B. So all of these identities, these are external. These are all external sources. So my source for the object that gets created. So for all of these, when I add a B to B, it creates like a little stub object here. But it is an external for the source. Additionally, there's another attribute. There's something called a user type. And this is going to be guest. Now we often think they're one and the same thing. Hey, if you're external, if you're B2B, you're a guest. And that's true initially, but technically they don't have to be. I can with PowerShell, for example, set Azure AD user, I could change the user type to be member. So member is what we often see for people that are actually part of our Azure AD tenant. They are replicated from AD, they were created as cloud accounts. And why this is important is we want to collaborate with these people. And most of the time we want those external sources and we can see this. So if I quickly jump over to the portal for a second, here in the portal, we can see, hey, I have users. If I go and look at all my users, you can see, hey, did they come from, for example, the directory synchronization that came from AD. And I can see, hey, the user type, are they members or are they guests? And you can see most of them are members, but I do have a couple of guests. I've got one here that's obviously EXT, it's an external source, Yahoo. If I go and look at that, well, it will actually show me here the source. Well, in this case, it's OTP one-time passcode because there is no kind of federation capability with Yahoo. However, if I went and looked, for example, at my Gmail account instead, we can see here, well, the source is Google. Right here, it's showing us that source. We can also see the user type here is guest. But I have other users. I have ones that, for example, are just Microsoft accounts. But that Microsoft account, I can see, hey, yeah, look, the source is Microsoft, but it's a member. I have other accounts that come from a completely different Azure AD. So we can see this is an external Azure Active Directory, but it's user type member. The reason I might change that would be something like, hey, I've got this relationship with another company, maybe it's an acquisition, maybe we've merged together. So I've added their accounts into my Azure AD as an external source, but they're not really guests. They are part of my organization and I want them to be treated as members so I can change the type. But ordinarily, you're gonna keep them as guests. Now that guest is used in many different things. Conditional access has an option around guests, access reviews to check, should I keep access to this group or app or this role? 
can trigger on guests. Even dynamic groups, I have an option for will the user type his guest. So there's many types of checks we can do around guest users. So it's important to understand, hey, there is this differentiation, and often we treat those external people as a guest. But there's another area, and that's really the thing I wanted to focus on here. And it's really about what they can do to Azure AD itself and what they can see. Because there's really three different settings I have. And what the default setting does is if I'm a guest, I can see my account. And if I, I can't browse, I can't just go and look at everything in Azure AD. But if I know the UPN, if I know the ID, I can look at the object. And I could look at who the manager is, who reports to, what groups they're in. And then because now I know the group name, what's the membership of that group? Well, now I know the people. Well, I can look at that person. And I can basically track the entire hierarchy of the organization. I could guess at UPNs. If I know the naming scheme for the company, I can't browse, but if I can guess the UPN, I can then go and look at the object. So that ability to kind of peruse through and map out and work out is scary for some companies. So there's now a restricted option that says I can look at my object and that's it. I can't, even if I know the UPN, I can't look at membership of groups, I can't look at other objects, I can't do any of that stuff. And that's actually what I'm going to focus on. So if we jump over for a second, now the way I'm going to get to this, if I go back to my Azure AD, and if I go down here, I have this user settings option right here on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and select user settings. And then I have this external users set of options. So I'm going to say manage external collaboration settings. Now this opens up a lot of different things. You'll see there's a whole bunch of settings here around guest user invites. Um, who can invite guests? Can guests invite guests? Do I enable this one-time passcode when um, that guest is part of an organization that's not Gmail, it's not a Microsoft account, it's not Azure AD, it doesn't support SAML, and I want to just send them a one-time passcode that proves they still have access to a mailbox. So it kind of proves they're still at that other place. Do I want guest self-sign up? But I'm going to focus on these options up here. And what this is showing is, hey, look, the default guests have limited access to properties and memberships. But essentially, as I kind of talked about, what that means is, hey, if I can guess the UPN, if I can look at some option, I can find my way around the entire Azure AD. I could make guests behave exactly the same as regular users. Now I could browse. I can actually just say, hey, show me the Azure AD. I can see everything. Generally, you're not going to do that. But now I have this other option. User access is restricted to properties and memberships of their directory objects. Now, even if I know the UPN, I cannot go and look at that object. I cannot look at membership of groups. I can completely lock it down. Now, things like SharePoint and Teams will still work. They have their own sets of controls. Other applications, you're going to want to test and really make sure it's not breaking them. And there's actually a Microsoft article that talks through all these different levels of permissions. So member user permissions, default guest permissions, and restricted. And as you can kind of see, it walks through to say, hey, normally I could read properties, read display names and contacts and search by properties. If I do this restricted mode over here, I really can't do anything. I can read my properties and that's it. I have no permissions to groups. I can read properties of enterprise apps. I can read company display name, but really where the big difference is are these users and contacts and the groups. Essentially, I can read my own and that's it. So if you are concerned about the idea that someone, as a guest, you have guests in your Azure AD, and you're worried about them mapping out your Azure AD or seeing things. Hey, if I can go and see group memberships, I go and see a group called Special Project. And I can see who's working in that. Maybe I can work things out. 
If that's a concern for you, then by all means, look at this new restricted option. Make sure you test the app, make sure it doesn't break things. Uh, you can go ahead and help lock that things down. So again, it's just a, a setting now in Azure AD. Um, check it out in a test tenant first. Test, test, test. Um, but there you go. I hope this was useful. Until next time, take care.